In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Avogadro's law and the concept of molar volume to find the formula of a hydrocarbon from combustion data. Avogadro's law, of course, is this idea that equal volumes of gases at constant temperature and pressure contain equal numbers of molecules. So let's jump in and take a look at this. So we've got 10 centimetres cubed of a hydrocarbon at room temperature and pressure. So, of course, that uh, molar volume is going to be 24 point naught decimeters cubed completely reacts with 100 centimeters cubed of oxygen which is an excess that means that some of the oxygen is going to be left over at the end of the reaction the total volume of the products was found to be 95 centimeters cubed that's going to include some unreacted oxygen and it contracted to 75 centimetres cubed when bubbled through a solution of sodium hydroxide. So where should we start? Well, the, always the best place to start in chemistry is with an equation. So off we go. So my formula for a hydrocarbon, let's take it to be CXHY. It's reacting with oxygen. And the products of this reaction are carbon dioxide and water. So firstly, at room temperature and pressure, water is a liquid. And that's important to appreciate because it means it's not going to contribute to the volume of the products. It's not part of that 95 centimetres cubed. Carbon dioxide is a gas, oxygen is a gas, and our hydrocarbon would have been a gas. We know from the question that we have 10 centimetres cubed of our hydrocarbon. We can also figure out how much carbon dioxide we've got because that was the point of bubbling our product mixture through a solution of sodium hydroxide. The sodium hydroxide removes the carbon dioxide. We can see that the volume of products contracted from 95 centimetres cubed to 75 centimetres cubed. So the volume of carbon dioxide in my products will have been 20 centimetres cubed. What about the oxygen? Well, I know that I started with 100 centimetres cubed, but some of that was in excess. The final volume of the products was 95 centimetres cubed. Take away the carbon dioxide, we're left with 75 centimetres cubed. So I've got 75 centimetres cubed of unreacted oxygen in my final products. So obviously the volume of oxygen that did react was 25 centimetres cubed. So let's pull all that together and see where we're at. Well, I know that C, X, H, Y, gaseous, plus O2 gaseous is going to form CO2 and H2O. Now, simply from the formula of my hydrocarbon, I know that if I've got X carbon atoms, I'm going to form X moles of CO2. And if I have Y hydrogen atoms, then the number of moles of water formed is going to be Y divided by 2. The information that we've just worked out in terms of volumes tells me that I have got 10 centimetres cubed of my hydrocarbon. It reacted with 25 centimetres cubed of oxygen to produce 20 centimetres cubed of carbon dioxide. Now I could turn this into moles and the way to find the number of moles of a gas is to divide the volume by the molar volume. So the molar volume in this case would be 24 decimeters cubed or 24,000 centimeters cubed. But actually, it's far simpler just to work in terms of gas ratios. I end up in exactly the same place. So my ratio is 10 to 25 to 20, which is 1 to 2.5 to 2. So straight away, I now know that x equals 2. 
OK, let's carry on. So I have C2HY plus 2.5O2 going to form 2CO2 plus Y divided by 2H2O. 2.5 O2s gives me 5 oxygen atoms. I know that 4 of them have ended up in the CO2, which means that I've got 1 water molecule. So if I've got 1 water molecule, so 1 water molecule, then I must have 2 hydrogens, Y equals 2. So my final formula must be C2H2. If this has been useful, hit the subscribe button, the effortless way to support your studies. And by clicking the link in the blurb below, it will take you straight to the Crunch Chemistry School, where you'll find all the resources you need to get that A-star grade at A-level. Together we can do this.